Okay, guys. Wednesday evening. Ah, that's right. That's Tony and the creaky chair. <laughs> it pops more than it creaks, but anyhow. So we'll get uh, things set up here because we're going to do uh, some painting. And uh, the soup du jour is uh, the Irish command stand. This is the Irish light horse commander. And we've actually already, if you've watched the stuff that we did over the weekend, we've already painted a good amount of his companion. But we had to stop because we didn't know what we were going to do with uh, his flagpole. Because we didn't know how big his flag was going to be. And they came in yesterday. I think it was yesterday. I don't know. Everything's turning into a blur. So here they are. Little Big Man Studios flag, so. And I don't know which one of these I'm gonna use, but um, I'm pretty sure that whichever one it is, it's going to, um, it's not gonna affect that choice, so. So if we break things out here, what we got is, I'm definitely gonna be using this one for the pre-feudal Scots. I've seen something pre-feudal Scots and it's a similar pattern to that. We're not using this for the Irish because it's got some runes on there. Probably not going to use this one. Again, I'm not using them not because they're not cool, just not for this army. So it won't be this one. It won't be that one. It won't be one of these small ones. It won't be this. So what are we left with? Um, this one, which is kind of a St. Patrick type color. And this one here with the tails, which honestly, to be, to be honest with you, this is probably the one it's going to be. Um, it's probably going to be that one right there. So with that said, and that's the worst case scenario from the standpoint of the largest one it could be. So let's, uh, let's put a pin in this guy and that way we've gotten that accomplished. So I'll just move this up and we'll just move it the heck out of here. So we don't need it to be. Super tall. Let's see what let's see what we're dealing with. Let me go grab my uh, bag of tricks here. And see if we can get away with using one of these. Because I have a crap ton of those. clip one side of this. Let's see what the size of that is. Compare it on the flags. That's a good size. That's a good size. For any of these. All right, we could use a pin. We have a ton of these, so. And they come in these really cool containers, but unfortunately this one I'm never gonna use, uh, never going to use these enough, though I won't need to put them in here. But I like what it talks about in here. These are size 17, an inch and, an inch and one sixteenths. That's what I hate about the, the, the imperial system, these sixteenths of an inch nonsense. 26.99 millimeters. I like that a lot better. Nickel plated steel use for satin and medium weight fabrics and flagpoles on your figures. That's what it should say. Okay. You know, some people swear by brass rod, brass rod, this, that, or the other. So I brought these brass head pins one time. I've never used them. They're too bendy. I'm sure I'll find a use for them, but not for this. All right, let's do a couple things. First thing we're gonna do is 
we're going to drill this thing down so we get a better purchase on it. But before we do anything else, let's sand the crap out of the end, file the crap out of this so we make sure that we don't uh, poke ourselves here. Okay, now I could leave this end up in the air, but then you got the squash head there at the top. I don't think I want to do that. It's going to look weird. So let's take our clippers. Overkills, overkills clippers. Now what we'll do is we'll end up going like this. But we want to drop this in a little bit more so you get a better purchase on gluing it because it's not in very far. All right, so let's get our pin vise. And hopefully we'll have some people to show up tonight that uh, want to communicate. I thought I'll go do something else. I'm kidding. This is what I want to do. Especially now I'm on the cusp of getting these guys finished. Um, why do I keep misplacing my glasses? I know what I'm looking for. I just can't see any of it. Let's see. This is what we're looking for. We're looking for our Chinese drill pit set. I don't want to use this one because this is damn near the same size as that hole. And uh, I want to go a little bit smaller. I don't have a big margin of error. If I didn't give a crap what the markings were on here, I'd just put these in the matchbox. Like I have the other ones. Okay, let's see what we got here. Um, this is similar to that. So let's go and get Say this one. Now, hopefully it drills better than the last one I did. Well, it worked after all, so I'm not going to complain too much. I didn't pay much for these things, so. It's not like you just go to a store and buy something like this. I guess you could, but, you know, it takes time and to find things in a store. And God forbid you ask somebody if they have something, because people just don't know anymore. All right, so we're going to drill this out. All right, and we've gone through now. Okay. All right, so I'm fine with it being, I'm going to leave the rest of the post here on the bottom, because I don't need to drill that out. I'm just going to attach it to the top here. And it's going to be a little different thickness in the bot top and the bottom. I don't care. I did that with my Burgundian guy. And, um, yeah. Now, let's check. Uh, let's do a flag size check again. And let's assume that we wanted to put the big one on. Yeah, that's plenty fine. Okay, so we're going to put this here. And uh, let's mix up a tiny little bit of epoxy and get that going on there. Where's the Epoxy Brothers? Certainly there's a 
piece of cardboard here I could use. So what happens when I do a couple of unboxings and I'm all upside down, disorganized? I still think I have probably the most organized place I've seen. Certainly the ones I've seen online, there's some people that just, uh, they must thrive on chaos. <laughs> I just get distracted by it. Okay. No reason to put up something new for this, so. Somebody already gave me a thumbs up. Man, you guys have poor taste. I haven't even done anything. <laughs> appreciate it. Always appreciate it. The fact that somebody gets some value out of this other than me is amazing. I'm doing this for me. If I don't film, I can come up with excuses of after five minutes leaving. If I do film, I can't leave after five minutes of doing this because I look like a ADD asshole. So I'd rather just look like a regular asshole, not an ADD one. <laughs> All right. This sits in there pretty well, so I can go ahead and leave it in there and not freak out about it. That it's going to topple over. That's the problem with some things that you epoxy. It is a five-minute epoxy, so you don't want to leave it um, sitting in there um, while things are precarious. And then you come by, back and look at it and go, oh, shit, this fell off, and now it's epoxied at the wrong angle. So you got to be careful. But I think with this guy, it's going to be safe. All right. That's it. We're going to put this. We're going to have to tinker with that a little bit, but we'll come back to him. Let's, uh, let's put this crap away before we get epoxy in the wrong place. So, John Peter, you having trouble falling asleep? It's... Oh, why do I keep saying that? I think you're, you're not in Germany, are you? You're in Canada. Yeah, I keep thinking you're over in German time. I'm really looking forward to you paying the Polish Hussars. Well, here's the deal. Okay. I didn't know what was going to be in that box. I had no idea. I have no idea what's in the box. With that said, I was surprised there was that there was that, that many things that were in there that were useful. Because basically what he did is he added... Um, let's call it eight pounds. Actually, it was six pounds. He added six more pile, six more pounds to the lead mountain. Okay, so I have no idea what's in there. I've, if you watched one of my latest, one of my painting videos I did over the weekend, I said I wasn't going to tell everybody what was on my short list to work next, and then just was the world's worst spy and still spilled my bean, spilled my guts. Okay, so if you know the armies that I mentioned on there, what I'm working on. On the short list, you'll you'll know what's on my short list to work on next. I don't have some of the elements of those armies, and at this point, with as much lead as I have, I guess is it still called lead? Well, you guys know what it is. I guess most of it's pewter. Who knows what the hell it's called now? But I still call it lead. I guess there's a significant amount of lead alloy in it. But um, with a significant amount of lead that I have. Um, I, um, I don't, I don't like buying more stuff. Okay. Um, unless I have to. And, um, there was a couple things in there that I needed to buy and they were in there. Just luck of the Irish. Okay. Well, it wasn't the Irish, but anyhow, but there was some Irish auxilia. So I'm probably going to, when I do the auxilia for the Irish, uh, I'm probably going to use uh, those bonnet figures mixed in with other stuff. You know, I don't mind mixing things in. So, but the problem with it, the problem with the, so going back to poles, um, the poles would be okay, okay, because the army, there's two armies that are on my short list that have the poles as allies. 
And those later polls, um, if you know how allies work in DBA, you've got to pick the, the allies are basically three elements from the ally army and you subtract three units from the core army. The three, army, the three units from the Allied Army are not whatever units you want. They're, um, they have to be the general's element. And if you have a choice of what the general could be, it could be either one. Now, it does not behave as a general. It is just a regular unit, but it just means that whatever the commander of the, of the other army is, that's what you have to use as one of your elements. The second of the three elements has to be the one that's the most common. Uh, I, forget ex I forget how it's worded. The most common um, uh, category of them. Okay, so you don't count up all the knights, but if you've got like three knights that say noblemen on horseback, and then there's a comma, and then somewhere else it says, you know, two more knights, uh, uh, noblemen from the upper country or whatever, you wouldn't count them together, you would count them separately. So whichever one of those categories you have has the most number of figures in it, the most number of, of units you have to have is uh, the one you have to choose as your second element. And then your third one is any one of those that you haven't already chosen. Now you could pick another knight if it's something that um, I had like two knights, um, you, could, you could pick that. But it's, you know, you can't pick another, if there's only one unit that say is a, is a knight general on your ally, and that's the knight. You can't pick another knight. You've got to pick one of the other elements. So um, it's worded weird like that, where it could be easy to misunderstand what he has to say. So with that said, with the polls, you like this ramble? That's what happens when uh, I don't have enough caffeine. So two armies are on my short list. Um, have the polls as allies, okay? Um... So that's a good fit, right? Except the Wing Hussars, there is no way I can use them. Um, I think the poles run through like, in DBA, run through like 1515 or something like that. There's no way I can use Wing Hussars until 1550 at the earliest. So, um, so if I paint them and use them in a DBA army, they're way out of period. Now, that doesn't mean I don't wanna paint them because they look cool. What they're really useful for is when I start working on my Renaissance rules, which I do not want to do now. I actually started working on them very basically, and then COVID hit. I started working on them, and I started working on them because I bought a laptop. I hadn't had a laptop in, in, in eight years, and I got it in March. And as soon as that happened, COVID hit, and... I'm not going to work on my on. I'm not going to work on my Renaissance rules while the atmosphere is the way it is, and the reason why is uh, there's just already too much arguing about shit, and I don't want any more of it. So, um, anyhow, so the poles do are cool because I have the Ottomans, which you know my Ottomans are. You know, the Ottomans that might fight the Poles would be in the late 1500s. If the Ottoman guys aren't exactly the same that I already have painted in my army, I'm okay with it. I mean, you know, but just for playtesting and stuff, they would fit good. But uh, I just don't see doing the... Uh, and then, I mean, I guess I could always paint them and not do anything with them, but no. No, we need to do them for videos, so, um, you know. And uh, as far as videos go, we're going to make, I'm trying to make some arrangements so that uh, we can get some videos done, but we need to change the environment that we currently have over at uh, Mitch's place. Because it is, to call it chaotic would be, you know, it is the understatement of the century. The other day we had six players, which we knew we were going to get, and we're like, well, we won't film. It's just too many. It's just too many people. We tried it with six. It didn't work. Couldn't get the video out. And not only did we have six people, we had a dog. We had an ex-wife that came by, a girlfriend, children. You know, we we just you can't have all of that stuff. It doesn't mess up our game. It just we put out a shit product, and I'm embarrassed to you know put my name behind it. So, uh, anyhow, that's that's that. So, um, and I'd rather. You know, I'd rather film, uh, I'd rather film than not film. So, uh, but anyhow, 
Um, you're right, I'm in Germany. Thanks for the tip on the nobodies. I've got the figures, but just never looked at that army. I'm touching them up and hope to post the army on DBA within the next couple of days. Okay. Well, you know, and John Peter's talking about the battle that we did uh, the other day. I posted some pictures of it. And um, I always get asked, I didn't this time, but I always get asked, hey, is there a video coming? If I post pictures of the battle, there's no video. I mean, why would I post pictures like, I, you know, like, hey, here's these pictures of this battle that I'm going to make a video and it'll be up in a few days. Teaser? No, I don't. I don't tease my own thing, you know, so. Uh, but the nobodies, we did a, um, a Joe wiped the floor um, last time he came and um, he was determined he was going to pick what the theme of the of the event was. And um, he uh, picked uh, enemies of Rome. So not Romans, but anybody who fights the Romans. Okay. And, um, oh my gosh, I got a brush here that needs to be salvaged. So he picked, that's what he picked. So, um, six of us came over and, uh, and played and, um, must've left in some haste. No big deal. Um, six of us came over and played and, um, actually it was only four because Mitch didn't play and his buddy from from Illinois didn't play. He was uh, he came and visited him a couple of times. One of his war game buddies from up north. So, but uh, Marty did come all the way from uh, from the Space Coast uh, for a couple of days, and he played as well. So, let's just say uh, I got rid of my nine game losing streak. Thank goodness. I was actually kind of wanted to keep it going, you know, just to, you know, just so I could brag about something, but. You know, I mean, what I got to lose when you got a nine game losing streak, right? But now uh, I'm now I'm on a four game win streak. So um, now the other extreme. So uh, Scott came by for a visit. So I kept telling him it was because of him coming by. It was my lucky charm. I would won any games. He hadn't been able to join us. He'd started a new job. So uh, it's been, well, I guess, like three weeks since he's been able to come. So that's the three weeks I've had my ass handed to me. So, you know. Of course, I'm just kidding. That's just coincidences and stuff like that. But it's fun to talk about it. So, um, okay. So, uh, yeah. I don't know what the hell happened with this brush. I didn't like that. I like dried paint. That never happened to me. I mean, it was like I couldn't even flex it. Hopefully, this isn't my good one. Ah, it doesn't matter. It's a cheap brush. I got other ones that I haven't used yet. So, but I don't like being uh, careless with it. All right. Um. Right, so we need to finish this guy up. So let's um, make sure this is completely erect. That's the word of the day, erect. All right, and um, right, let's continue with this then. So let's um, yeah, finish this guy up. So after these, uh, this command stand, what do I got left in this army? Well, they're already playable the way they are. Hell, there's four people watching. Let's show them. You guys want to see the army so far? Yeah, you do. You didn't come here not to watch things. I don't like how it looks on the video here. The lighting in here is superb for painting, but somehow the, the camera just hates it. Everything looks washed out and... It looks much more whitish than it does in person, so. So this is actually more than an army because I can't play them. Uh, let's see, if I use the two pikemen, I gotta drop two of these guys out. So now it's a legit army. Or if I put these guys in, I got to drop the two pikemen or any combination. If I, I put the, the two blades in, I can drop any combination. So that's a DBA army. So I already have more than a DBA army of it. The light horse, you can't use it with the, uh, with the um, knight general. Yeah, it goes both ways. Um, you can't use this guy I'm building with him, so it would replace the, the general, so... 
But um, hold on a second. Let me check on one thing. Okay. Uh, so anyhow, so this is, uh, so I've already got it. I, I could literally play with these guys. And I would have played with them on Monday if, it, if this was an army that I could have used on it. So at this point, I told the guys, hey, I'm just going to, I'm not going to play these guys until all the options that, until I'm done working on them. So it, I may not play them for another month or something like that. So we've got some other stuff to work on. We've got some auxilia to build. Uh, we've got this guy to build, uh, and we got three units of blade to build for the uh, Scots Isles guys, um, that kind of stuff. That is, unless I get sidetracked on my next project. My next project should be to finish up my Russians, because I've got like seven mounted figures to do, and they're done, the whole army. But I'm not excited about it. About them. I've already played them in a tournament. I substituted Ostrogoth Knights for them. I had all the right foot. I substituted the Ostrogoth Knight. I won the tournament with them. So it's like, okay, not that excited about finishing them up. You know, that's why you don't do that, I guess. <laughs> but um, you know, I'm on the fence about that. So I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue building this stuff these guys here and not worry about what's coming up next but um but anyhow actually one of the things i've liked so the most about um we're going to use some enamel paint here to make sure that we get on that post there and then we can go back and do that one of the things i've liked the most about this army was making this banner this was a jpeg image that was sent to me by um Greg down in Australia and uh, I took it in with the drawing program and modified it and I basically what I did is I took this two color image there was blue and white and did the same thing that I do with my painting method so that is going in there lightening them up and you can't tell because my printer is not kick-ass but if you were to see the image this was on it was it was most impressive I was I'm not impressed by all this painting that I that I do. I've done that a million times. Uh, I get impressed when, like, I paint a background that I've never done before. Like, holy shit, that looks good. You know, this painting, like this kind of painting, I've done this for years. So it's like, yeah, yeah, my normal stuff, yeah, yeah. But this, the drawing thing that I did on the program, you know, because I've got a laptop that I got it. I was kind of regretting it. I was regretting it later on because I'm like, ah, I got one of those pens. And I didn't really use it. But I got on the... Um, that free program that's done by the same people that do AutoCAD, Autodesk uh, Sketchbook, and um, just kind of um, drew on it. I mean, I used to draw way back in the day, but then, you know, I decided to paint things. So, um, so yeah, I really like that. So I'm looking forward to whatever the next army that I do have a bunch of custom flags. So... Somebody suggested that I should sell them, but I'm not sure really how to go about that. I don't want to mail things to people because mailing things to people means I got to go to the damn post office and deal with that nonsense there, especially in these days, you know, when I can only go to the post office. I'm working. I haven't missed a day of work through all this nonsense. So, uh, and I'm fairly busy. Um, I don't want to, the only time I can go through the post office, because, you know, they got bankers hours, right? The only time I can go to the post office is on a Saturday. Well, who the hell wants to do that? Or uh, go during my lunch break. Well, I don't want to do that. That's that's time where I don't want to. I want to, you know, relax. So, um, you guys got any ideas how that might work? Uh, let me know. Maybe I'll take you guys up on it. But you know, I don't want to just sit there, sit down, and do flags. But if there's a flags that I've done for an army. Like, let's say I painted Feudal English, and I had a bunch of flags for Feudal English. Uh, I wouldn't mind selling them. I mean, I could take PayPal. That's not a problem. 
I thought about just doing it for donations. If you want to give me some, you know, a buck or two, that's cool. If not, that's cool too. Oh, uh, anyhow. But that was a lot of fun. It still took a couple hours to do one flag, but it was fun. I sat in the, you know, I got a laptop. I can, uh, I got to make sure that I don't uh, ramble too much. I end up putting this in the wrong place. There we go. Because this is enamel, which means it's, it's unforgiving. It's unforgiving. Yeah, I don't want to sit there and do flags on commission. Like, uh, Frank wants me to do uh, a bunch of flags for uh, Feudal French. And uh, no, I'm, I'm not doing that. But hey, I'm already doing the Feudal French. And I did them. Here's the flag sheet for them, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I've got an inkjet printer and this is as good as they can get. But, you know, maybe I'll get a laser one for Christmas. I don't know. The thing about the laser printer is they've gone down a lot in price. And we go through a lot of we go through a lot of ink on the inkjet because it goes bad if you don't use it. And we're not really printing very many things, so we're kind of screwing ourselves. You know, we'll have one thing here, one thing there for the daughter's uh, school project. But other than that, you know, so that may be something that, uh, that I may look forward in the future. Okay, so we got this guy here because there's a lot of flags that aren't made. You know, I mean, if Pete's Flags makes it. I'm getting Pete's flags. But after I did this, I'm like, oh, I know how that Joker makes them now. I don't know how he prints them yet because I haven't gotten that quality printing. But the quality of the drawing is 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 high quality that I was able to do. So, Okay, so this guy's got a shirt on underneath his um, mail or whatever it's got. And uh, we don't want to use that stupid... Um, that stupid uh, yellow color on him too, because this guy's uh, this guy's a high roller. So, um, not sure what color we're gonna do for that. We might do like blue, just a, a light blue, just to bring in another color. You know what? I've already decided we're gonna do a light blue. Hey, if I don't like it later on, I can go. I can paint it. I've done that before, not that many times. Not that many times, but I have done it before. Uh, okay, let's see. Kelly Davis from Michigan. Hello. Any plans for DBA terrain building live streams? You know, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good thought. I'm not an expert on terrain. I, I haven't done a lot of stuff. I mean, the stuff that I've made, I think has turned out really well. And I've been happy with it. I mean, I've been happy with it and other people seem to like it. So that's, it turned out well. Um, but, um, yeah, that's a thought. That is a thought, for sure. The knights really stand out from the riffraff. Well, that is definitely one way to put it. Yeah. Whenever I see a flag idea or surfing the internet, I take a screenshot and using Photoshop, I save it for my beauty. I do, too. I do, too. But this is, there's a lot of flag ideas that are two-dimensional. And what I mean by that is they have no color. They have more depth to them. Because the flags I got originally, this is the flag I just printed out. That's the JPEG. I did it in a couple different sizes. I didn't know what size it was gonna, I wanted to use. So I just did several of them. Okay. And let's see if I can do show you one. No, this is the same. See if I can show you one where I enhanced it. Here's the big one. Here, I'll put it side by side so you can compare them. And it doesn't come out on, it's not going to come out on this camera worth a shit. And on the screen, it's actually a little bit more, it's more noticeable than that. This is like crazy. But the paper and the inkjet made it look almost like a, it's made of cloth. So it didn't turn out too bad. But that was fun to do because I could just watch TV and just color in there. So there's a lot of stuff on the internet that, and I'm not proficient with the drawing program by any means. I'm like, open it and start doing stuff, you know. 
I mean, I'm not computer illiterate, but I don't want to spend hours trying to perfect how to use this program. I want to like get my feet wet and then maybe watch how to use it. So now I kind of have an understanding of it. This is the first time I did it, anything with it. So um, I think it turned out pretty well. I was really, I was really happy with it. So and made me want to do more. So there's a lot of flag stuff that's on that you can find on the internet, but that is doesn't have the shading in it. Okay, it just looks like the first image that has no shading in it. And I want to take that and then do the highlighting on it, just like I do with the figures. You know, I'm not painting the horse in just one color and the figure in another color like those images are. I'm, there's shading and stuff in there, so I want to do that stuff. And um, and the paint program is pretty, the, the drawing program is pretty, um, um, forgiving. The problem is, is that, um, you know, sometimes you actually touch the screen somewhere you didn't, it only happened to me one time. So during like two hours, so it's not an issue, but, um, it, I touched the screen one time, I didn't realize it. So you can undo, like if you get something where you don't want, but you can't undo something that you did like many things many things ago. So you just have to be, make sure that, you know, you're not making a mistake and, and, and putting something in a place you don't want it or a color or something like that. Um, okay, it was pretty forgiving. I'm gonna be right back, because this is dry as crap. We're gonna fill the back of this and I'll be right back in, uh... oh, a minute. We'll call it a minute. problem with doing some of these like tutorials and stuff like the terrain and stuff I use I I didn't have a computer for so long that I depend on my phone so much for doing surfing and stuff and like seeing pictures and stuff and I can't use it if I'm filming because you know it's being used so um I could use the computer but I'm, I'm not I'm not doing a lot of surfing on the computer um I'm trying to avoid that as much as possible. I'll check email, I'll go to Facebook, I'll, I'll go to YouTube and look at and edit my videos and that's pretty much it. I, I got an ongoing play by email game going on um, with uh, someone I know and, and that's about it. I don't use it for anything else. I, uh, my last computer died because of, it didn't die, I stopped using it because of uh, redirect virus. So I'm very cautious to Make sure that I'm not using it to search for, you know, Google image search and then clicking on a site and then it ends up being some some place where they um, want to mess with your with you. I got ended up getting a redirect virus, so it really didn't do anything other than just drove me crazy, you know. So uh, and I had it cleaned and then it did it again. I'm like, okay, I I don't want to go through that again. Because um, for some reason you don't. They say you can get it on your phones, but. I've never had a phone that's gotten a virus. Or if it did, it didn't do anything to it, because... I go everywhere on the damn phone. I don't worry about it, but... Anyhow, I'm not worried about identity theft. You want to clean all my money out? Screw it, I'm not going to go work. I'll just paint for a living. I'm not going to pay all that shit back. <laughs> so we're just going to do this and I may not like how this looks I have no idea um, I just didn't want to spend an hour trying to figure out what the perfect color was it for this now you can't see his maybe you can see his shirt on the other arm 
<laughs> there it is. Sometimes some of these figures, you have to start painting things to under, to realize what it is that you're actually looking at. It's not being able to reach the brush in a tight spot. It's the what exactly is this? Is this a shirt or is it a continuation of his mail? What am I looking at here? So. But yeah, terrain tutorial would be okay. I'm, I mean, I'm no master. I've made a couple things that I've liked and... Uh, I don't, um, I don't buy painted things. I don't buy painted figures and stuff, but I have bought painted terrain stuff and been really happy with it. It's rather warm in here. Well, not compared to the, the place where we play DBA, it's not warm, but it's a little still. Hopefully that's not making too much noise on the camera. The camera seems to pick up everything. I had uh, the last cam, I say camera, I mean phone. Well, it's the same thing, but the last one I had, even though it couldn't process these vi videos that were really complicated really well, um, I did got, I did get a, um, a Rode microphone for it and it does, it did seem to cancel some of the sound out, but the plug isn't compatible with this, um, with this phone and I'm not buying another one. So, um, you know, I don't want to spend another 80 bucks on a, on a thing. I did get a one where I, I, um, I converted the, um, cause this thing doesn't even have a headphone jack, which is where the other one plugged in. So this one would have to plug in through like a power. Uh, there's an adapter that goes in the power and then you could, then it has the headphone jack off that. But as soon as you plug it in, it, the, the microphone goes crazy. It starts making a really high pitched sound. So it's not compatible. Um, and I don't, I don't feel like throwing money at the problem. So um, to be honest with you, when I was shooting the other videos, if I used a, a if I used a microphone or didn't, it didn't make a big difference because um, we're not shooting things outside. If I was outside, it would make a big difference. But, you know, uh, I'm not going to do a cooking show and I'm not it's definitely not going to do a garden show. OK, let's bring this up a little a little bit. Do we still have some white that's alive? Probably not. It's been it's been days. So I don't know exactly which the next army is, um, but that's the deal with the Polish Hussars. I could use them, but then the next thing you know, I, I got to work on my Renaissance rules and I just, I think I got some interesting ideas for it, but I'm just not in the mood to put it out and then people and then being put on trial why I did this and do that, especially with the with the current climate. Um, I just I'm, I'm I want a game. I want to paint. Uh, I want to be positive. I don't want to argue with people. I'm, I'm just not interested. So. You guys can find all kinds of other people to argue with that aren't me. There's lots of people out there that. Uh, Seems to be their hobby. I've left groups before because people like to argue. I'm like, why bother? I don't tolerate negativity in my hobby. This is therapy, not more problems. Okay, shoes. So this uppity bastard has shoes. What kind of an Irishman is he? Uh, well, this time period, Irish people wear shoes now, I would imagine. I just can't imagine not wearing shoes if you're riding a horse, like these guys. These guys. They're riding a horse and they're barefoot. Like, why would you do that? As soon as you get off the horse, you're probably stepping on a, uh, some kind of a, some kind of road apple. It's pretty likely. Maybe you like that sort of thing. <laughs> Oh man. No, nope, no road apples. 
comments here, please. I might have trouble finding the brown. Is this the one I want to use? Yeah, this one. Will work. Leather brown. Well, what are the shoes made out of? There you go. Well, they could be faded and stuff. What? Tony Curtis, how you doing? How's Janet doing? <laughs> Tony Curtis hanging out with uh... Oh Christ I'm going to forget now <sighs> Oh well He was with him in the Vikings Tony Curtis and uh... What's his name's dad That's not around anymore Oh well Forget it I'm useless today. Catch me on the weekends. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. We already got black. And this is the cheapo black. I'm fine using it. This is the, um, this is the craft black. Which, you know, the thing is, is before I had this wet palette, I was going through black and white like a son of a bitch. So I'm like, I just can't keep buying the Vallejo Black. Um, so I ended up using, um, this is cheap. This is folk art stuff or, you know, you can use any of this folk art or whatever. It works just fine. Um, I've heard it doesn't cover as well, but I'm not painting anything completely in black on that. Well, I am the edges, but, you know. Uh, Kirk Douglas, there you go. That's exactly what I was going to do. Tell me, how's Kirk doing? <laughs> oh, man. What brush manufacturer I use? Uh, I think they're called Ching Chang Chungs. No, they're just whatever. There's, they're they're a different brand. I threw away the first bag, but these are from Walmart, uh, Folk Art, and um, made in China. Well, everything's freaking made in China, other than those Windsor and Newtons, which there's nowhere in town to buy them, and I'm not going to mail order them. Um, if I'm spending ten dollars for a brush, I want to pick them. So I go in there. These are this is ten brushes, and yes, some of them aren't very useful, like these flat ones. But I can do some dry brushing with them. But they're less than four dollars for ten brushes. I mean, how can you go wrong with that? So anyhow, last time I went and bought, I bought like four packs of these, so I cleaned them out. But I have to get them from someone else because. That's, uh, I won't be going to that store again for multiple reasons. So, um, Hobby Lobby has them. I guess I could mail order them. They're cheap enough that I could mail order them. I was gonna buy some, a $5 pack of some brushes. And, um, but when I bought the four brushes, I'm like, man, this is gonna last me like five years. Yeah, but I'm painting a lot more than I used to. I mean, I'm painting more now than I've ever painted. So, I'm going through some brushes. I mean, it's, you know, it's, one of those one of those packs will probably last me six months, you know, or four months. It's because it's mainly these the small ones that I want, you know, but they're they're not quality. But I'd like to try one of those Windsor and Newtons just so I could compare, because I've used these cheapo things quite a bit, and just to compare and see if. Those things are worth it. I have a feeling they're not, they're not going to be. I, 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 I can't imagine one brush being worth so many of the other ones. So. But I'll throw 10 bucks at it and see if it works. But I want to be able to sh pick the shape of it, you know, so. But all these brushes are okay. I was thinking about brushes, you know, when you're a kid, the brushes you use suck. Because, you know, the ones that came in those little testers kits and they're like, not only are they nylon, they're shaped, and they're a useless shape that can't come to a point. It's like they've got everything going against them. Might as well paint with Pactra paints while you're at it, right? <laughs> I guess there's some people that still use enamels. I, I could paint with enamels, but I don't want them to reactivate. And they, you know what? I couldn't paint with enamels. Because the little bit of enamel painted that I did like this, 
because normally I, I, I spray paint. Um, I want an enamel coating as, as, a, uh, as a primer so it sticks better. But the problem you have is as soon as you go over it, it starts getting gummy and you can see brush strokes and, or worse. And that really caught me off guard when I started seeing that. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I never have to worry about that with, uh, with acrylics ever. So, yeah, I'm not going to paint with humbrols or whatever. Although I did have one, uh, a Firefly tank, a British Firefly tank that I painted, um, we'll say 20 years ago. It wasn't that long ago. Um, I was still paint. I was already painting decent quality stuff back then, same style. But um, I I painted a, a tank, and I wanted to get the right uh, the right shade for uh, British Northwest Europe in World War II. And I got their bronze green one and, and used that little humbrol tin to paint that one tank. So. And then, and then never used it in anything. <laughs> That's why, you know, even though this, there's better games than this silly DBA game, <coughs> I know I'm going to use these guys. I'm going to use them over and over and over again. Do I wish the game had more detail? Absolutely. That I wish the game wasn't written in the way it is and easier to... Absolutely. But but I'm going to go through games. We're going to have fun playing it. Um, yeah. So. That's my story. And I already know how to play this damn thing. So. Um, it goes back to the question somebody asked me over the weekend. Am I more of a gamer or a painter? And... Uh, yeah, probably more painter. I'm probably 60% painter, 40% gamer. So. Now it looks like I'm going to take another break here. We need to get some liquids. I'll be right back, folks.
Well, it took a little longer than I wanted to, but at least I came back. And more people were here, so when I left, man, you guys need to get a life. If you're watching paint drying, you need to go to another channel. This is a wet palette. You're not getting any action here. <laughs> Let's see. Tony Curtis says, I've also found out some of the enamels could peel. Of course, that was way back in the day before spray protective coatings. So what I didn't know is, um, I'm getting sidetracked, but I don't care. Okay, so don't, I know somebody was saying, man, sorry, sorry we're going in different directions. No, man, you're keeping me interested and keeping me from falling asleep. Um, if nobody's here throwing questions at me, I'm bored. So I picked up these things at Historicon. I don't remember who makes them right now. Um, I don't remember exactly who makes them, but um, they uh, are rubber. And um, actually, if you tell me who makes them, I'll say, yeah, that's them. I just don't remember right this second who they are. Um, Battlefield Terrain Concepts. And they actually might be from, um, is the name of the company who I bought them from, the seller. And they might actually might be from uh, Timecast. I believe they might be Timecast. Timecast makes some awesome buildings. And I think they make some rubber, some, some rubber terrain as well. So these are rubber, right? So pretty cool. So I, um, I spray painted them black like I normally do everything else. And then as soon as it flexed, they look what we got here. So this is one I'm going to have to bend and scrape down and 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 primer it with acrylics, which is what I did. I used this cheap ass paint when I repainted these because I, I did two of them. I did these as rice patties for one of my Chinese armies. Okay, I just drew in some lines here and stuff like that. So I, it came with, well, it came with four. So I had two of these. So yeah, this is the one that's that's primered in acrylic and it still had some enamel left, but you see how it's, it's cracking here, you know? And it's just unfortunate, I didn't know that. I didn't, I figured, Oh, well, and uh, acrylic's not going to stick to this. But it sticks to it pretty well. But, um, but anyhow, that's the, yeah, it cracks. I didn't know that. I mean, I guess if I thought about it, it would work, but, you know. Yeah, no flexibility, so. Okay. Yeah, back in the day. Back in the day, I didn't primer, I didn't seal anything. It wasn't until about 1996 I started sealing my 20 millimeter figures. That's what I was doing at the time. Before then, when I was doing my 12400 scale ships and stuff like that, I didn't seal them at all. I don't know. I was just a punk ass kid. I didn't know. <laughs> See, I would have been 25. Yeah. Okay. Shoes. So let's bring his shoes up, you know, because certainly he's worn them around the house at least once. So they're they're scuffed up a little bit. Just a, just a tiny little bit here. Don't need much, okay? What are you doing next? We got his flesh done on him. Let's um, let's see some of this where this came down through. Paint that black. You guys watched that unboxing I did. I think it was yesterday morning. It was yesterday morning. And it was like doing it while the girls were asleep. Um, 
I mean, it's not like they're in the same room, but still, I didn't want to make a whole lot of noise. I couldn't do it the same night that I got them, but um, yeah, I was trying to speak really loud and uh, I mean, really softly, and it was really weird hearing myself. It was like I sounded like I was stoned or something. I mean, that's ever happened before. I'm just saying what I would imagine it to be like, so it's weird. I don't have a problem enunciating normally. People have to tell me to shut up, not the other way around. So it was weird trying to speak softly. Okay, so we got that on there. What do we got left on this dude? We got a belt, we got some reins, we got hair. Here's a good choice. Let's make this guy blonde. You know, because the leader is going to be redhead. Duh. You know. Duh. Let's get some, let's get some yellow out here. Let's get some yellow out here. Oh, there we go. There's the yawn. I yawn all the time. I could be dropping a 32 ounce Starbucks cold black coffee, cold brew and, and still be yawning. And still fall asleep. Of course, I'll wake up every 30 minutes. Oh, we got some maintenance things to take care of. What do we got here? Nothing there. Oh, good. I'm live on painting. Well, no shit. I'm live painting. <laughs> Hey, why you get that notification? You're live on YouTube. Thanks. I can't check my messages right now. I'm live on YouTube. I wish this uh, this chat had a notification that was a sound that only I could hear. You know, you don't want it on the video, but I got to look up from time to time. So if you see the screen shake, that's me pressing the refresh button to make sure there's no new comments. Because a new comment will come in, and then it stays on there for like seven seconds, and then it fades to black on the little chat box. So I'll try to answer those things as I see them. So. All right, let's... Uh, I'm going to start maybe a little bit darker than this color. We don't want to go all the way to the darkest shade and just paint his hair brown. And we're going to lighten that up as it goes. So. You already got his face, right? This guy's got a beard, so. Yeah. He painted his face earlier. Looks like he's got a goatee, so that's what, that's what we'll paint, I guess. He has this hairy French thing on his face. Had another day of rain that gets rained with the exception of maybe one day in the last two months every single day and a significant amount of rain every single day so I don't know if that's normal I don't remember I'm messing up work big time not really messing up my personal life other than uh, hard to find time to mow a lawn so don't want to do that while it's wet. Okay, 
paint is fun. What are you doing with the paint, Joe? Are you painting things you shouldn't have? <laughs> Sounds like somebody, some running around, trashing somebody's house with uh, just pouring paint all over. Painting is fun. Wee. <laughs> Painting Chimer Ox. Cambodian Vietnamese dudes. Let's see if they make some kind of an Angkor Wat camp or something like that. So that'd be pretty cool. <sighs> Nine o'clock. It's past my bedtime. I kid about that, but that's uh, not too much of an exaggeration. Only reason for me to stay up is, uh, you know, if you go to sleep, you end up having to go to work, so. Let's see if we never did this middle shade here. I'm distracting myself a whole lot, I guess. Tomorrow's Thursday, right? Yeah. Man, I'm just losing track of every day of the week. So this guy's, uh, this guy's pretty blonde. He's pretty yellow. He's a little bit more white. Right, now what? You got a flagpole to do? Let's go ahead and do that. Where's that SX camera It's black? Here it is. Tony Curtis says, just curious, Tony, if y'all have a planned theme set of bat reps soon, and if so, any particular period. So, you know, we, we plan on playing every week. The problem is um, it, we're too popular. Too many people show up. If we have more than four people show up, we can't film. We just can't. Because the, the other people that aren't playing, just you can't film two games. And they can't sit there quietly, so there's just too much of a commotion. So, uh, you know, the opposite problem where it's like, I don't have anybody that lives near me or whatever. We have the opposite problem. We're like, our games are so much fun, people can't stop coming to them. So, um, but no, we don't film like way in advance, you know. I can tell you the next time, without even talking to him about it, the next time it's just Mitch and I, we're going to do the next uh, series in the uh, Diotiki set. You know, the battles of the successors, we'll do that. But I don't know when that'll be because people just keep showing up. And um, during the summer, I was able to do it a couple times a week. That's why you guys got bombed with summer stuff. But and during the summer, I don't have uh, the daughters not doing any swimming or anything that I need to pick her up from. So, um, you know, that's the that's the that's the big difference. We kind of made hay while the sun still shone. So. Um, but no, we don't have, I mean, we have basically an unlimited amount of, of things we could do. And, um, but that's why it's the way it is. So I'm a big scheduler, but other people, not so much of a scheduler. 
Um, some people just, hey, I'm, you know, we got like a little group going on of who's showing up and, you know, we'll have a whole week of thinking we're getting four players and then in the last 15 minutes, all right, I'm coming over. And that throws everything for, for a loop. So that's, uh, that's what happened a couple weeks ago and you guys didn't get to see the video because it, um, it was a shit storm, let's put it that way. So, um, Rick Copen, Tony, do you still talk to Musashi at all? Do you know if he still plays DBA or he's just into Southwestern stuff these days? I see his channels about reviewing cowboy boots. Okay, so um, I talked to him a little bit. He has a whole lot of energy and he distracts easy. So, yeah. That's, um, he's the whole reason when I we did the first videos with him, um, I was already thinking about doing it, and I had just gotten a phone at that time that could handle it. My Samsung 8 Plus, I had just gotten it, uh, I don't know, two months in advance. So I thought about possibly doing it if the editing was gonna be easy. And um, he, in doing his videos, I realized what could be done and what I didn't want to do. I did not want to buy really expensive lights that warmed the room an extra 20 degrees. I didn't want to. So I kind of started doing it on the cheap. Uh, I bought a cheap tripod that cost me, I think, less than 20 bucks or whatever. And just saw if I could get videos up there and the rest is history. So, you know. Yeah, that was kind of the impetus of uh, him showing. Because uh, that was uh, that was October. That was like September or October of 20. 17 or 18 it was one of those two years but at that point when he came up i hadn't seen him in probably six or seven years so he's um he's here today gone tomorrow but he's still around um yeah he'll sometimes take pictures of cats and he's got a a japanese store where he sells things from japan and uh down in Tampa and um, you know yeah he's doing the western stuff now just just wait a year or so he'll start you know wearing women's clothes I'm kidding I hope not <laughs> oh man he's got a lot of energy but uh, he's um his, uh, he's definitely an oh shiny guy. I distract easy, but but I'm also not jumpy all over the place. I've played the same freaking game since 2004 and pretty much nothing else. So, but uh, I just don't like extra distractions because it slows me down and stuff. You know, it's kind of like I don't like a house with a lot of clutter because then you can't find anything. You know. Um, not that this is minimalist or anything, but, you know, I've seen other people's videos. I'm like, that's a great workspace if there wasn't everything in a way. I mean, it's just so damn distracted. But, hey, you know, whatever works for you, um, you know, so be it. But so I talk to him sometimes on over Facebook or whatever. But, I mean, I live two hours from where he's at and I've never made it out to a store. So. Musashi Yamasaki, or whatever his day is, his name is this week. <laughs> He's got a couple of reviews there, also of like a like a note, like a backpack for a computer and notebook thing. I thought it was a really good. I thought that video. I mean, it's not a product I was looking to buy. I thought that video was a really good review, and he got like. I think he had multiple people that gave him a thumbs down. And it's like, man, it's a great freaking review. Uh, I don't know. People are weird. There's no point in giving somebody a thumbs down because it's like you see a video and like, I don't like that. Let me give it a thumbs down. Okay, well, how could they make it better? You never tell anything. It's like you basically just, you know, threw a rotten egg at somebody and they don't even know what it's for. <laughs> But then complaining is bad too. I just pretty much, if I don't like something on the internet, I go somewhere else. 
you know, I have a limited amount of time on this planet. Um, I want to focus on uh, stuff that, um, for my hobby, that um, that's positive. So, just like, why are you going to play a game with people that are assholes? Just find somebody else, you know? They probably ruin your other, your other, you know, if you got one person in your group, it's like at work, if you've got somebody who's troubled, if you got one employee that's bad and 10 that are good, the one, the 10, the 10 good employees aren't going to make the one guy that's bad better. The one guy that's bad is going to ruin everybody. The next thing you know, everybody's bitching about everything and it's like, it just isn't worth it. I thought that one of these had a, a mixing ball in it. There it is. I need to transfer these, these things over. But man, that took a long freaking time. That was kind of a disappointment. The bottles looked like they sucked, but they worked just fine. But the whole process took a lot longer than I wanted it to. But you know what? I don't make that damn net. I don't have the ring around the edge of the bottle anymore on the, on the other color. So. Uh, Okay, here we go. Uh, was it Don Harding? It's Don, Don, it's Don Harting, T-I-N-G. Spelling, who created the DVA setup templates. What's the story behind not wanting to mention his name? Was it just an inside joke or does he really not enjoy battle reps? Um, uh, you want me to narc on people. Uh, okay, I'll tell you the whole thing on it. So, um, back in the day of DVA 2.2, um, I probably don't have one anymore. Um, I created, I don't know, created, I came up with the idea of just using cardboard like this and just cutting into the area you couldn't deploy in and just putting it there because people were spending a lot of time trying to figure out where you could and couldn't set up. I'm like, just put the freaking cardboard down and move because when I'm learning to play the game, I was taking forever and I, I didn't want to waste 10 minutes on that. And then that caught on, like other people like started doing it too and stuff like that. And Don Harding, I mean, I've played with him forever. When 3.0 came out, he did the same concept, but then put information on there the same way. So that's where it comes from. Okay. The inside joke about not wanting to mention his name, his name is, for the longest time, um, he, uh, he's retired. Well, he's retired now. And the big joke is, you know, um, why don't you watch some of my videos? Oh, they're too boring. They're too this. They're too that. They're too. So it's like, okay, well, I'm not going to mention you in the videos. <laughs> he, uh, he, he has a different way of going about things. He'll go to a convention and he wants to get people together. So he'll run like a big battle scenario. Okay. Um, that takes a long time, you know, and everything like that. And, and that's just like. I think the better way to grab people is do the videos. Not necessarily to teach people how to play the game. I mean, that is one. But the other thing is to make sure that people know that this stupid game and this purple cover is still alive. That there's people out there playing the game. Because if you pick up a set of rules, you're like, hey, what kind of rule set are there for uh, whatever you want to do? World, say World War II or whatever. And it's like, oh, this rule set's really good. But you don't see anybody playing it. It's difficult to find it. I'm like, I don't want this game to die. That's my whole reason for doing all of this is I don't want this game that I've spent hundreds of hours paying these figures to go away. That's it. You know, I don't give a shit about making money. I don't give a shit about, you know, uh, if other people can want to play the game a different way than we play it. That's cool. I just don't want it to disappear. And the problem with the game is, is the way it's marketed. It's a little bit better now. Now that you have it on Lulu. Now you can buy your own copy on Lulu. But for the longest time, it was like they would send out like 100 copies of the book to print. It would sell out and six months would go by and you'd have to like uh, pull a bunch of people's hair and gripe and complain for them to make more of it. It's like they, they didn't want to get the they didn't want to get the word out on this game. So, um, yes, you want you need me? one second, one second. We'll be right back. Okay. 
So, you know, that's my whole purpose in doing this, is to make sure that you guys know, because this is a great game, but it has a thick outer shell, and it's not a candy shell, okay? So, um, yeah. Um, so, anyhow, um, yeah, that's the whole story between Don Hardy. You know, he's like, he's got all this time in his hands, and he's like, oh, I can't watch your videos, I'm bored. We got nothing else to freaking do. And he's uh, on, um, he's got someone in his family. I want to say it's his daughter-in-law or something like that. That's a nurse. And she's scared, she's scared him to even go out to the mailbox for anything. So he's, um, he's self-quarantined and, and, and hiding. And, and he's not in a, he's in a very, he's in a rural area. So, but, you know, be it as it may, I, I'm, I don't think that uh, we'll see him until he, until he's uh, until he gets a vaccine or something like that. So, but that's the that's the story behind him. So, um, so yeah, it's a joke, but it's like, dude, man, all you gotta do is just watch a video. He's like, he's poo pooing our attempts of uh, making the uh, the game accessible to people. So anyhow. Um, I agree about the thumbs down. Constructive criticism is one thing, but just a thumbs down leaves the video creator questioning what wasn't liked. Thanks for all the answers. I've just been super curious about these DBA personalities from your past. Yeah, that's him. You know, um, his his method is put on a big game where everybody can play like a big battle using DBA. But. I'm, I don't want to, I don't mind doing the videos. I don't mind interacting with people, but I'm, what's the saying that I coined? I coined this saying like two years ago and pretty much hits the hail on, hits the nail right on the head. The way I think about it, it's, um, just because you don't value my time doesn't mean I don't value my time. So I don't want to spend th two, three hours teaching somebody how to play a game and then they just Okay, that's nice. I'm going to leave. I actually had this happen to me one time. I ran a, a how to play DBA convention at a, at a con. I want to say it was, say, 2011. It was about that time ago, okay? And this guy came with his kid. I'm like, cool, he wants to learn how to play with his son. No, he dropped this kid that wasn't even interested in it, and I was, like, entertaining this kid, and I never saw him again. Like, I don't mind teaching people how to play the game. I don't mind teaching people every single trick how to beat me and how to, you know, because I want to do it for, to make, to make myself a better player, but I don't want to do all that effort and you're never going to show up again. You know, it's like show some interest, you know, um, cause a lot of people are nomadic. They're just, they want to play, they want to go to a con and they want to play something new and want to go to something else. So when you put a big game on of like DBA to me, what appealed to me was the fact that I can play with my figures and in this small space, not I can play with a ton of figures in a long game that takes a long time to resolve. You're just basically turning DBA in every other game. The combat resolution or whatever may be unique to DBA, but what appealed to um, in, in a big battle game, but what appealed to me was that you have a small space, you can sit comfortably, um, you can knock out one battle in, in 50 minutes and, and play another one or play a, a series of them. That's what appealed to me. Um, I'm not interested in playing a big battle type type game. So um, so if, um, you know, um, if you put in the effort, if you come to all the cons that you can and put in the game and ask the questions, I will teach you every single thing I know because I want you to be a better player. Because when you play me, you'll challenge me more, you know. So, but I don't want to just rant and rant and, you know, and do all this kind of stuff. That's why um, I don't mind this format that we're doing. Right. And, you know, by the way, I don't care if I'm not getting any, I'm not any painting done because this is entertaining. This format, even though there's only six of you online, maybe 26 people see this, okay? That's a lot better than doing a one-on-one -on -one with somebody using a tabletop simulator. So I really don't want to do a tabletop simulator type thing with learning how to play DBA because I'm only influencing one person instead of like, oh, well, Tony's got a good point or, you know, whatever. I, maybe some people just go, ah, he's an idiot. Well, that may be, but I can at least get the word out to more than just one person at a time. So um, I don't mind explaining things out then in, in that type of a, in that type of an environment. So, 
Um, I don't want to do the two, how to play videos because it just seems like no matter what I do, I always leave stuff out or maybe, God forbid, get something wrong. But, you know, it's very frustrating from a creator standpoint of doing that. So, um, because even after playing almost 2,000 games of this game, I'm still learning. There's still stuff that, you know, you just have to, is hidden in, in the verbiage. We haven't found anything new lately, but maybe about a year ago, we came across a couple of things that we were doing wrong all along, so. Let's see. Tony Curtis says, I agree about what you're saying about using YouTube to keep and expand DBA. Because of your videos and a couple of players locally, I'm building five armies and getting back into historical gaming. Yeah, you gotta have the local players. You gotta have the local players, but man, you gotta get a. You can't just grab that book and go with it. It's it's insane. I mean, once you've played a, a handful of games or or seen a couple of games played, you know kind of maybe what not to worry about. So it's easier to. Nobody wants to play this and play it wrong. So, you know, um, yeah. Rick says, I agree as well. This channel has brought DBA to my attention. I've peeked at other DBA videos here and there before your other creators, but your channel tone is just a treasure. Well, I wish it could be better, but I hate editing videos. I gotta hate editing videos. It just takes so long. Um, it's better now that I got the, a phone that could handle it, but I, I got the laptop and tried to edit a video on, on the laptop and it just took for freaking ever. The, the video editor I use on my phone is one called Kinemaster. It's spelled Kind Master. And it's exactly what a video editor should do. I mean, you've watched shows, okay? So if you're not, if you're a person of average intelligence or more, you, you already know how to edit a video. You know how things should go. You start with something, it fades to something else. You come in, pop the, you know, when you describe something, the letters come up. That It's a no-brainer, okay? And the kind master really, uh, the kinemaster master really allows to do that. The problem is, is that my old phone was at capacity where it just couldn't process that anymore. It had only four gigs of RAM and it's, it's, you know, we're doing it in 1080p and it would just jam and stuff. If you get the video out, it would be fine, but it would just jam and it'd be really frustrating. This Joker's got 16 gigs of RAM, so we're good for a while. So we don't have that issue anymore. But um, I, will, I go to the format now that, um, that has multiple videos on one, um, multiple battles on one, um, on one video, which is easier for me because I don't have to create displays and all that stuff. Uh, for all of of each individual battle, I can just do it once for four. Um, the video it didn't make it. Actually, it was a three-hour video, and um, we got seven battles in a three-hour video. But it, it just it, it was way too noisy. I, I learned my lesson. I'm like, I can't. I just can't do that again. You know, it just it was a colossal waste of time for me and. Uh, you know, I don't want to put something out there that's so bad that people are going to be like, man, Tony's stuff just sucks now. So we're just going to leave now. It's, that sends the wrong message. So, uh, And it was bad because you're talking about, you know, two people are playing and five people are watching. And the five people aren't just watching. They're commenting. And the problem isn't they're commenting on the game. They're commenting about things that aren't on the game. And being extremely loud. So, um Anyhow, um, hopefully we won't have that happen again. So, um, whether you're painting, boxing, or playing, I look forward to every new video. Wow, thank you, thank you, Rick. I appreciate it. Um, I do this for me. I do this so that I'm not playing Assassin's Creed right now. You know and that I'm not, you know, doing whatever. You know, this is because at the end of the day, this is my, this is my therapy. I'm happy with how this turns out, and uh, you know. The other stuff, I just end up getting angry and yell at the TV. <laughs> I'm playing with my people. I don't get, I'm a, our game group, I don't get angry at any of the people that I play with, even though I roll like crap or whatever. It, it's all good. But I think the other day I, I booted up the Assassin's Creed, the Greek one, that I've finished, but there's still stuff to do. It's absolutely beautiful, but... I go and do something simple, like I launch in and I'm like, oh, I got to go talk to this guy to, to cash in this mission. So I go over there and on the process, I activate a couple of wolves. So they're chasing me. So I run all the way in and dismount. Well, it, the people that I need to talk to is two Spartans in a camp. So we all start fighting the wolf together. 
And I'm like, and the wolf isn't dangerous from the standpoint that it's going, it's, it's threatening me. It's just an annoyance. And I'm like, okay, while I'm fighting, I'm like, okay, I got to be careful that I don't strike a blow at one of the guys I'm trying to talk to and have a different type of a problem. Not that they're going to defeat me or anything, but how did I get on this sidetrack? Anyhow, uh, not that they're going to defeat me or anything, but then they won't talk to me because they're freaking dead. And so I was really careful. Uh, we fought it together and I didn't hit them. So it's over, you know, I loot the wolf or whatever, and I'm walking back, you know, they're going back to their, because you know, they're just sitting around a campfire. They're walking back to the campfire. So I'm walking up to them. And as I get closer, it's, you've got to press Y to speak to them. And just at the last minute, it switches to press Y for assassinate at the same time and press Y. So all that trouble and I still assassinated them. And then, you know, now I got a fight on my hands. I can't talk. I had to reboot. You know, I'm like, I'm angry at the computer. And it, it's like literally 30 seconds of being in the game. <laughs> so <laughs> this keeps me from doing that. <laughs> oh. Your terrain is some of the most handsome pieces for the scale I've seen on YouTube. Are there any more pieces you'd like to create to add to your collection? Do you feel you have most covered? So, um, I love my road. Oh my God, I love my road. It's just a piece of, um, of um, it's a bandsaw. It's a, not a bandsaw. It's a, uh, a belt sander. So it already had the texture in it. It's basically unbreakable. Um, and it curls in the direction that helps you. So it's like, that was just a win. Now it's a pain to cut through. So I had to cut one edge and man, I went over and over and over and over. Um, I wouldn't mind having another road. I'd like to have a 30 inch road. Although lately we've rarely been playing on the 30 inch, 30 by 30 boards. We've been playing on the 24s. Um, that's just, you know, luck of the Irish. We kind of let the attacker pick what side they want. Why am I using this color? Jeez. It's because I'm not drinking coffee. I'm drinking this cranberry cut down with water. Um, I don't want to stay up all night, even though I still got enough in me right now. We're not going to bed. Any We're not going to bed anytime soon. At least I don't think I am. Um, other terrain I wouldn't mind doing. I got a beautiful waterway, but I don't. Maybe you'll see that soon. Maybe you'll maybe you'll see that in a video soon. But it's only only works for twenty four inch. Um, what else? I got a couple things I do. The the problem is is I just get I get analysis paralysis. If I just jump in and start doing stuff, it'll turn out okay. I can fight my way out of it. I have, um, you know, here's a little 3D printed city that I, I didn't finish. And this is a uh, Rod Felderman made this for me, but I still got to finish it. But I'm like, man, I don't want to spend 20 hours working on this thing. It looked great, but you know, and it's not perfect. It's got, uh, you can tell that it's 3D printed, but it's a hell of a lot better than anything else. And it's, it's at a reduced scale, which, you know, I like that. So got to finish that. I've got a Chinese walled city that has been sitting here for, I don't know, three years probably. Let me, uh, let me spoil this. Let me, spoiler alert. Let me show you what I got here. And I just, you know, I just, it's analysis paralysis. All right, so you're going to have to vis envis visualize this a little bit, what we're dealing with here. So this is a city. Or the attempt of a city. Okay. This that you see here is what the outside walls will go on. So just imagine like a piece of cardboard that's running across this. Let's see if I can find out. I need more cardboard, man. I need to start taking some pads from work and just throwing them away and keeping the par cardboard part. <laughs> so just imagine a piece of cardboard that we're going to cut out and make uh, towers of it like this. This just keeps it at that angle. Okay, and then inside, this is just a this is just a piece of plastic to keep it up a little higher on the inside. You know, we can have a little pagoda there like that. We've got some other buildings that can go in there. We've got individual buildings like this. 
that we can do. This is from like a board game. You know, there's just a lot to paint to it to do a, a Chinese city. But, you know, I've got that to do. That'd be nice to I have a, a big size BUA, you know, like Shang'an or some Luoyang or one of those big met metropolis type uh, Chinese places, you know, because we like our uh, Asian cities. So we like our Asian armies. So it makes sense to do that. So that's something I just kind of just, you know, it's sitting over here in the pile of to-do list, you know. Uh, I've got some other hills. Before I got the pre one, here's here's a general hill that I made. This is just the the pink stuff and just coated it in the stuff I base this stuff on and do and do that. I haven't finished that. You know, um, it's hard to get excited about city about uh, terrain, but uh, maybe I could do a terrain video and that that might help. So, um, you know, I've got um, what are these key cards from hotels that we forgot to return. No, that those make fields. That's what our other fields are made out of. They're actually we bought those at Historicon. Some guys actually making them. Um, that stuff like that will work. Uh, that enclosure that I made for Mitch. That was my first attempt at it, and that's that's probably the most ter the terrain thing I'm the most proud of of making. Is that enclosure is really 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 pretty. He didn't buy it or anything. I'm like, here you go. You wanted enclosures. Keep it here. I don't uh, sell things for people. I I give them away. So, um, you know. And when and you can't ask for them, you just you know, it just it's a miracle. You just you just happen to get one. <laughs> and I don't you know because I don't want to uh, cut corners. And if I'm gonna paint something, I'm gonna do the best job I can. Is I want to be proud of it. I don't want to be like, well, you know, um, I'll paint for you, but do you want uh, just the three foot grade or do you want a collector's quality or like I'm gonna paint it as as best I can, you know. Um, so Luke has an artillery piece I painted for him. I think he had a bunch of French knights and he's like, uh, I'll give them to you. But uh, I said, I'll tell you what, how about you give them to me and I'll paint an artillery for your whatever element. So I, su I supply the artillery piece and everything. So uh, and he's really proud of it. Nothing kicks ass except when somebody used it. I think Patrick used it. And he couldn't do jack shit with it. It didn't roll worth a damn, but that's a kick ass artillery piece. You know, it always seems to roll well and do stuff in the battle, so. Um, but terrain pieces I don't have. We need to use gentle hills more. I'm just afraid of putting them down. I'm afraid of putting one in a place where it's going to benefit my defender and I'll, I'll lose the game. Uh, it'll, it'll benefit the other guy. And it, I would I would have, had I not put it down, I wouldn't have lost the game. It's just kind of a stigma that I have against them. I don't have anything against them particularly, but I'm just afraid of that, you know. Um, that is another name I heard you guys toss around every now and then, Rod Felderman. Is he someone you've game with in the past? So he used to live in, um, in Florida. And um, he gamed with us like one time. And then he, because he was in the Navy. And... He is, um, he's painted things for Mitch. He's painted whole armies for Mitch. And um, he is retired from painting at the current time. I think he's got, um, he's got a baby and another one on the way. So he's got a lot go on, his, on his hands going on. So, um, but yeah, he's, um, he's in North Carolina now. We were going to go up to Historicon. Well, he was at Historicon last year. And we were going to pick them up on the way up and do that. But, you know, we know how that all worked out. So this year was a bust for everybody. So at least, I'm not going to say at least we all got screwed together. No, at least uh, we have a local game group. So um, I'm gaming it often enough. Once a week is good enough for me. Um, I could even gain less often than that and be okay. It's the it's the painting this often that I'm really enjoying. So I got a lot of stuff. To, I don't have to paint everything I have. There's a lot of things I want to do. So there's a lot of armies that I want to do. That um, you know, but the funny thing is, I'm not excited to paint the, to play these Irish. I'm like, I just want to I just want to paint them. I want to find out what figures to use and 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 the whole process and what they look like. Playing them, eh, whatever. They'll, they'll probably get hosed, you know. <laughs> Depends if I use the dye I was using the other night. 
that thing was uh, that thing was on fire. I ended up bringing. I knew Marty was coming up, so I ended up using a die that uh, that I had salvaged. He he was at a con one time, and he got so upset with it, he threw it all the way across the room. I went and salvaged it. He wasn't playing me; he was playing somebody else. But I went and salvaged it, and then used it, used it the rest of the convention, and and did just fine with it. So I had been sitting around for two thousand eight. Jeez, I guess I've been sitting around for like 12 years. Jeez. Right? 12 years? Holy shit. And, uh, and I pulled out and I said, Marty, you remember what this is? No. I said, this is the die you threw all the way across the lamp outer room. Oh, my God. You know what? So I used it and I was went 4 and 0. It's just coincidence. I don't believe in that stuff. But it's fun to talk about it. You know? <clears throat> you know, I feel like I'm the guy that sells the National Enquirer. Like, I know it's all bullshit, but it's fun to talk about it and freak other people out. <laughs> Sells more papers. <laughs> I still don't understand DBA train effects. I have the rules, but I haven't played yet. Yeah. Well, it's not you. It's 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 weird. The abstractness. It's the most difficult game I've ever tried to play. And it's because, not necessarily because of the rules, it's how they're organized. So, you know, if you guys are familiar with what the unofficial guide is for earlier versions of DBA, you know, some people are like, hey, you need to do an unofficial guide. I'm like, I'm not going to do it for somebody else's rule set. Because that's a ton of work. I don't enjoy the rules. Okay, the rules are just a way to, a, a means to an end. I enjoy what I'm doing right now. Uh, I enjoy the camaraderie of the game, looking for figures, how I'm going to paint, the research of how guys are going to be. Yeah, I want to play the rules right, but I, I don't, I'm not one of those people like, let me use this rule to screw the other guy. That's just not my personality. Um, I'm not really interested in that. Um, that's, that's not my, uh, my play. But um, the way they're organized is just, Nothing's ever, once you realize, nothing's ever repeated a second time. So if you say something like, you're trying to figure out how to use war wagons, there might be something that's described in the war wagon in the description at the very beginning, which nobody ever looks at, that is a key component of how they behave in a certain situation in battle. Um... But it's never repeated a second time. So if it's repeated in their description at the beginning, it won't be it, that same thing won't be repeated in combat effects or movement or anything like that. So it's like it takes. It just seems like it would have just taken a lot less effort to just repeat the things in the section that applied to the section that we're talking about instead of like, nope, I already mentioned that once. I can't mention it again, or you know, I commit a mortal sin. So. It's not that the rules are so bad, it's just the fact that they're abstract, and, and, and remember, these are by far the best set of DBA rules I've ever played. So they're a lot better than 2.2, a lot better. I mean, it's like night and day. Um, I, you couldn't get me to play a DBA 2.2 game now. Um, I just wouldn't play. You know, If you wanna play it and that's what you enjoy, well, good for you, but I'm not going to, you know, so. Just like if you don't like playing 3.0 and you're happy playing 2.2, have fun playing 2.2, you know? I believe in freedom. When in doubt, choose freedom. You know, I don't care if other people don't do the same thing I do. I don't get a thrill at all, you know? Um, but uh, that's the big problem with the rules, is nothing's ever repeated a second time. And um, war, war Wagons is a good example. Uh, Marty in the Grab Bag gave me a couple War Wagons, which is... Two things I didn't have. I got like 130 pounds of lead. I'm probably rounding up some. It's over 80 though, and I had no war wagons. So, um, so that's good. But I got to figure out how to use them. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna mount them on a 40 by 40, definitely. But I need to find out how they play. I mean, I've used them before, but I mean, how they play well, depending on how I'm going to. Uh, mount them so that the front edge looks a certain way or you know so that it's helpful in gameplay as well so um, 
Can't wait to see that Irish banner turns out. That was one of the most bizarre decal transfers I've ever seen. Well, they're beautiful, but have you ever used them before? Have you ever used little big man's little big? I was called little big man. Hey, come here, little big man. Little big men studios decals. They're very strange. I've used decals. You know, we've all built model planes and stuff, but they're not. They're not the same. So, um, never. You just saw them the first time in your video. Okay, let me explain them in a nutshell. Um, and there's actually videos of somebody putting them on there, but I use them on... Here we go. Let's see if we can get this to come out okay. This is a Russian knight, and it's a shield decal. Now, I don't mind paint, painting shields at all. Okay, I enjoy them. But the way you, do, you have to paint... The way you apply this is... Um, the decal sheets from Little Big Man are, they're crossed between a dry transfer, they're a wet dry transfer, is the best way to describe them, okay? Um, the banners work exactly the same that, that the shield decals are. The shield, shield decals, um, they're very vibrant, and they have a clear piece of protective coating okay i'll show it to you right here it's very clear okay and it's sticky as soon as you take this off you'll see that the under layer here is sticky which is amazing because it's totally clear you would think it would be opaque or something like that but it isn't so it's sticky so what you've got to do with it is is that you actually you cut it out with the plastic on it okay so you take an exacto knife and say okay i want that item okay and when you're ready, you take, you peel this plastic off and then you press it on the item that you want really well. And then you take water and not a whole lot, like maybe like a, even with a brush, you take like a, you want to use clear water. They take some water with a brush and just rub it over there till it is. And then you peel the back off and boom, it's done. That's how it is. But the trick is, is you have to put it on something that's white. So when you go to apply this thing i've painted every part that is a colored part on the shield completely white it looks like do i have one of these i think i have one guy i didn't put his thing on yet uh let's see if i can find it which for me i prime everything in black so it's not a big deal you just go in and paint uh the little shield area white is it this guy no i thought i had a guy here anyways it's just a white shield you know you just paint the area you're going to apply the decal on a white now on the shields, they're a problem because um, you you pr press it on there and you apply the water and that's done. If it's out of register a little bit, you're screwed. There's no way to move it like an old traditional water slide decal. Um, when I first started using them, I wasn't happy with them because you see how it's glossy. Uh, I don't know if this one turns out. There we go. See how it's glossy like that? They end up being glossy. But after I do my flat and gloss coat, they're completely dry into... These are pretty, I don't know if you could tell them, but they're pretty darn flat. Now, the other problem that they have is, is that you've got to cut the entire decal of where it's going to be because they don't come pre-cut or perforated or anything. And the problem is, is if you don't, you've got to paint it white. If you want to come to the edge and trim everything, like maybe add a little bit of black so that it pops a little bit, you can't do that on the edge because the capillary action will suck the black underneath the decal and it'll darken that one little area. So it was a learning curve. They don't suck, but they're just, you almost have to learn how to apply decals again. It's really, when you've done a hobby for like, gonna say 40 years no if we've done a hobby for 35 years and they throw a curveball at you like this it's really really weird now let's talk about flags when i go to do this irish flag what i've got to do is let's say i want to pick out this one which is probably the one i'm going to do okay spoiler alert okay i'm probably going to do this one here when i or this saint patrick's day one um what i have to do is i have to just like it is take my exacto knife and cut where the flag is gonna be all through the edges and everything. So this, it's it, pop it out, take a piece of, um, of, uh, of, you know, any kind of paper, like uh, computer paper, whatever, any kind of white paper, 
peel this thing off and then put the put it down okay so now i've rubbed it completely down and then do the whole water thing so i got to take some water and put it on the back of this decal sheet because this is this feels like cardboard stuff this is just like the back of it so you wet this and when you wet this then you can peel it off you know after like 30 seconds or something like that the weird thing is, is if you can visualize this you have a piece of paper that's here you have a decal and you've got this paper that's on the decal and you have to wet this paper without getting the back paper too wet or it ends up turning into a spitball so you got to be really careful i'm telling you it's super stressful because you only get one shot at it now they look great they look they look fabulous but they look better than anybody in that time period would be able to pay, paint a banner look at this russian banner okay there's no bastard that in the 13th century is painting an individual let's see if i can get this thing to focus and you guys are only seeing this in 720. there's no way that anything looks that good in in scale but they look wonderful you know but they're they're, they're absolutely beautiful so now if i had a choice between somebody like pete's flags or Little Big Band Studios banners, I would go with Pete's Flags all the way. Because that's the traditional, you know, it's on a piece of paper, you cut it out, you put Elmer's or PVA or whatever behind it, fold it, done. You know, knock this stress out. So, anyhow, they're weird. Um, would have never guessed what I was in there. Yeah, yeah, no, they look good. I, I decided to try them. They're the first ones I ever decided to do, so. Um, I don't mind painting shields, but I can only get so small. This is about as small as I can do. I don't know if you watched my video that I did over the weekend, but I painted Edward's shield to match his, his banner. And somehow I had I had the little cardboard here where I broke down his shape and just did it little by little. And my brush that I used should have won a Nobel Peace Prize because it was awesome. It behaved perfectly all the time. And um, that's this is actually very relaxing to do was to paint this. But I nothing can happen as I drop it. Uh, Nothing can happen with this that I can't paint my way out of because I've done it so many times. When you're talking about doing something that you're totally new at, it, it's scary because sometimes you could be on the wrong track and not know it until it's too late. So anyhow, um, I love painting shields. So What I really enjoyed was the banner. I don't know if you were here earlier, but this is actually just a two-dimensional banner that I actually went in the paid program and, and added... Almost like if I, you know, I, I made it nice and big and then did with multiple colors, just like I do my painting style here and added depth to it and highlighting. You can't really tell because I don't have a, I just have an inkjet printer, but yeah, there's a lot of detail on there, whatever, in the, in the white and everything else. So, um, I want to try that on a laser printer and see what, if it gets any better. I just have to find one, but, um, that was fun to do the, the drawing, the, um, the coloring in the, the banner was awesome. I, I wouldn't mind selling some of those, but I just don't know how to go about it. And I don't know how to go about it and I, and I not and and I don't hate the process. That's what it is. Because you don't want uh, you don't want me to start hating something that I'm doing as a hobby because I'll stop doing it. <laughs> and just having to go to the post office it just pissed me off. You know, only going at lunchtime. You know, it's the only time I can go and my lunch hour is holy, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> do little big men studios transfer. Yeah. They work exactly the same way. You're absolutely craving a collection, craving a video and miniature collection. Well, I don't have that much. I do have like 30 painted armies, but they take a long time to do. Like if you watched any of my, you watched any of my videos, I've got one on my Ottoman Turks. I've got one on my Ostrogoths and I've got one on my Song Chinese. 
those take a long time to do because I have to have into it. Check, check them out if you haven't checked them out. Maybe you already have and that's why you want to see more of them. Um, they're really hard to do and I'm not doing any painting while I'm doing them. So maybe I'll do another, maybe I'll do another army when I'm done with these guys. Maybe I'll do this. Well, obvious. I should do the Irish. I should do one on the Irish when I'm done with the Irish. But I love talking figures because I surf a lot. And, and these figures that I'm painting, nobody's given them a second look. Okay? They've been on the market for 20 years. And, and they either don't have pictures of them painted online. They're really small pictures or, or, or people. Sometimes people, you know, if you're going to sell figures and they're not painted to like an awesome quality, don't show them painted. You know, because... They just send the wrong message. Now, there's a couple companies that do not do that, definitely. They do the opposite tack, and that's Legio Heroica. Whoever's painting for Legio Heroica stuff is amazing. Okay, I love his style. And um, and many of the, and most of the Curacao are the same way as well. They have, a, they have a nice painter finishing their stuff up, either Steve Dean or, or somebody that like that that's really making the making you want to buy the figures the way he's, he's painting them. So... Um, Unless you're going to do something like that, don't even show the figures painted because you're just, you're going to turn people off. You're going to be like, ah, those figures look like crap, you know. Um, Essex figures, I don't give Essex figures a second look, but these commoner type dudes that I have, man, these guys paint up really nice. They got good faces, they have mustaches and everything, but you wouldn't have known because they have the same look as everything else. But, you know, I I'm enjoying making the... I'm enjoying as much as I want to play paint like the uh, forged in battle figures or something like that. I don't have any of those, unfortunately. They showed up too late. They they should have come out with their stuff ten years ago. I would have bought their things, but I have too much lead from other manufacturers now. But you know, anybody can make those forged in battle figures look really nice. I'm I'm more interested in these in the in the crappier uh, the second tier type figures look. You know, so. Um, Sometimes you go to a site and see either a tiny image of the figure you can't explain or hardly see, or even worse, no picture at all. Yeah, no picture at all. Um, rank and file. I did the unboxing. I have some rank and fire artillery that, that Marty gave me. There's no pictures of any of the rank and file stuff on there. They don't have a huge collection. They make like knights, crossbowmen, uh, foot troops. They make maybe like 12 packs of stuff in 15 millimeter. No pictures of any of them on there. It's like, it, it just doesn't make sense. I mean... Oh, well. Who are we to tell somebody how to run their business? Hey, I want, I want hobby places to be successful. You know, we don't want them to go away. At first, many years ago, it was like, man, you got to support your lo local hobby store. I don't necessarily believe in that because they don't have stuff that appeals to me. Like, if a store that sells Games Workshop stuff goes out of business, okay. I don't do Games Workshop stuff, you know. Um, I don't want the manufacturer of a 15 millimeter manufacturer to go out of business because I'll mail order from them. But, you know, uh, I would prefer to buy something at a store if they haven't because, you know, I don't want to wait for it. But they don't have them anymore. You know, no place has... Uh... I mean, even the local place, I wanted to buy some Tufts and they're out of them. They don't restock. So it's like, okay. I'd buy the stuff from you, but you don't have any. Man, that was a long ramble. Hey, I'm awake now. <laughs> Vision accomplished, right? Rick, what part of the country do you live in? Because I know you're you're in you're in the U.S. I'm almost certain. And I know you're not in Florida. <laughs> I would have remembered that. <laughs> Bellevue, Nebraska, the middle of nowhere, or maybe you're close to everything because you're in the middle. Nebraska. Nebraska's
Nebraska, Kansas is due north of Oklahoma, and Nebraska is due north of Kansas, right? I've never been in that part of the country. And I'm a map guy, though, but um, I bet the weather's a hell of a lot better there now than it is here. I'm ready for winter. I would take 365, no, I'll take 366, including the leap year day of, of Florida winter every day. Free air conditioning and no bugs. Especially no bugs. Yeah, if there's a site in Nebraska to be on, Eastern is a site to be. The temps have been in the mid 70s, been very pleasant. Okay. Yeah, here uh, it's like 140% humidity, and um, at night it's still and uh, in the 80s. It's dreadful. It is just absolutely dreadful. What I say the other day, I said, man, some people had to, have, some people's ancestors had to be in, in a real shithole to come and settle in Florida when there was no air conditioning. Okay. Hey, I could have gotten this guy done if I was no, not talking to anybody. I'm kidding. I wouldn't have done it at all. I would have, I would have spent 15 minutes here and I would have gotten sidetracked into something else. I probably would have started looking at figures for my next project, which, you know, I'm not going to do. Now, there is part of me that says, hey, after you're done with this light cavalry, Go and um, and do the camp, and then move on to the next project. But I don't know if I'm going to go that route until I get there. So um, I'm excited about painting the little dog. Good like I'm not a dog person. I'm not a pet person at all. I don't have any, but he's cute. And I don't know where I got him from. You know, there's many people who are like I don't want to have any extra figures. I. I love it having extra figures because I probably got this guy 10 years ago. I don't know where I got him from. I don't know who makes the casting, but it's a perfect Irish wolfhound in the right scale because he's big, you know. So he's going to be on the stand as well. The doggo. Doggo of death. Feel, but no, don't feel bad about the comments. Thank you, thank you for being there, man. I appreciate it because it's kept me interacting. You know, we go throughout our days, and there's nobody to talk about this stuff with. And it's not like we're a deviant. It's not like we're you know into molesting children or something like that. It's just our hobby. But there's nobody, and I don't have anybody I can talk to about history on a daily basis. Even history, like, okay, maybe some people are interested in history and they don't war game. That's cool. You know, at least I can talk to them about, it. nope, nope. I live in a college town, so here it's, you know, football and that's it. So, never got into that, so. We need the whole World Wide Web to be able to find our people of a common interest. And it's a small group because even within that people that uh, we have a common interest, some of you guys are assholes and I don't want to play with you. <laughs> Every group's got an asshole. And if you think your group doesn't have one, it's you. <laughs> yep, you're the one. <laughs> no, I'm really blessed and... Uh, uh, we razz the shit out of each other, especially me. I know I razz the other boys for, you know, hey, I'm this many games behind you or whatever, but I really don't care. Um, in a perfect world, we'd all win half the time. But um, we've got a good group of guys that um, 
I had a game the other night. One of the players said to me, uh, oh, I think I moved this guy too far when it wasn't supposed to. I'm like, go ahead and take your turn again. You know, it's all good, you know. Um, it had already gone to my bound. You know, that's the kind of camaraderie. That's the kind of games I want to play. And um, I know I know many people that ha say horror stories about playing in a tournament. I've, only tournament game I've ever played is this one. And I've had no problems with it. Well, okay, the, yes, there's... There's many, there's maybe five people that I've encountered that I wish never to see again in this life or the next. But, um, you know, with as many games as I've played, it's a pretty small amount of people. Um, there's, um, we play, uh, we play to a pretty high level of honor. That's why if you've noticed any of our games, we don't re-roll any dice. Well, unless it lands like on a corner or something or like in a field of pikes and it's not touching the ground. You know, if it's cocked, we play it. It's obvious which side the cocked is, you know, and we've had no problem. You're just prolonging. Now, if, you know, if it falls on the ground, you know, all bets are off. But if it's on the table, yeah, just play it. You know, as long as you're consistent. It's The problem isn't that it's cocked. The problem is, is that if you want to play it when it benefits you, but not when it doesn't. And that's just, you know, that's just dishonorable shit right there, you know. We don't have folks in, uh, we don't have folks in that group. I never, I never grew up playing with people like that, you know. Um, anyhow. Yeah, we're really blessed. Because I know some people, I know one person in particular, they, there's no cons, so they haven't played any games all year, so. The maintenance things here, what is this? Uh, nothing, okay, perfect. Okay, what else we got left on this guy? We got his banner done. Let me get the horse hair kind of done here. Let's, let's go a little bit more highlighting. The first army that I did on horses, it was the, the first DBA army I painted was the first horses I ever painted. Of course, I was already an experienced painter, so, you know, they're looking kind of like this already, okay? But everything, every single horse in the army had a, a black mane because it looks weird when you, when you put, as you're painting it, it looks weird when you're using a brown horse with a, color main that's almost exactly the same color as the horse that uh, I just refrained from doing it um, just because it just didn't look right and I love this color horse by the way this is that made by um, I want to say it's that cavalry brown just coincidentally it, that makes a beautiful color horse um, yeah cavalry brown a very rich colored horse and highlights well too so um, all right we need to do a little bit of uh we got some stuff on his helmet i'm not sure i'm going to make it bronze because it's going to make it pop too much and this guy is just a sidekick now he did come out of the pack of the warlords of the of the of the chieftains the irish chieftains he did come out of that pack but um but he doesn't have a cape, so he's not the main guy in charge, you know. So uh, you got to have a cape to be the main guy because, you know, never know what you got underneath there, you know. Got to keep people guessing. So we're going to grab a blast from the past, one of my um, relics of a bygone age, a color that has been with me for a long time, since probably about 1988, and it's still kicking. And that's this original Mithril Silver. And um, I probably have 60% of it still. I'm not going to be transferring this one over in bottles. Um, but let's take a look at her. And I use this one only for the shiniest of bits. Ah, it smells like Reagan. <laughs> uh, it's about 88, 89, 90, something like that. It's certainly not newer than 1990. All right, let's put some of that there. 
God, this covers so freaking well. This smooth, smooth application. It's, it's, yeah, it's very usable. What other games have I done in the past? Um, well, we used to play, what I started with was playing Sea Creek 4, which is a naval miniatures. And um, in 12400 scale, I probably have four or 500 ships in that. Now, they didn't look good like this. They look like, you know, somebody who's learning, you know, basic colors and we do a wash on them. And, you know, we didn't know about putting anything in, the, you know, it was before the internet, so we didn't know anything about putting anything in the wash, so the wash would look good when you applied it, and you, the next morning, you'd wake up, and you'd have all the capillary action, and it would look like crap, and you'd just deal with it, and, you know, that kind of stuff. We didn't seal any of the ships, and so we played that for quite a few years. When I started painting figures seriously, it was about 90, 1996. Um, I had some figures that I painted for Armadi, and those were the first figures that I painted that were in bright-ish colors. And there, and I'm not sure exactly how I started developing how I paint. Um, I don't know if that's a thing or anything, but I mean, back then, I don't think the, that foundry system was out yet. I think I just kind of watched, watched how things looked in, in, in the Dwarf Magazine. What is it, uh, White Dwarf Magazine? and just kind of put two and two together. But um, yeah, it's not a quick way of painting, but you know, the people that, the people that I like their painting more than mine, and fortunately there's not a lot of those. Yes, there, there's many, but um, I don't find that, I find it motivating because I know it's a trick. I mean, I've done this and I know it's, you know, painting is just bullshit. You just know how the bullshit works, you know, but the people that paint on, on my level or better than me, there's no shortcuts. It takes them for freaking ever, you know, but they're not getting sidetracked playing video games, I'm sure, because it just takes a long time. So, you know, you're not going to use some dipshit method and, and, and get museum qual. Okay. Not museum because museums have garbage in them a lots of times, but you're not going to get the top tier results using, uh, dipping and stuff like that, you know? So, um, there's no shortcuts. It just takes a long time. Um, so the best thing you could do is just work on one project and stay on that instead of just going all the way around. So, you know. Oh, it's time for the Australians to wake up. Just got back from morning coffee. You know, if I didn't have coffee in the house before I went out for it, um, I wouldn't be able to go anywhere. I wouldn't have the motivation to get out the house. <laughs> So I came to the realization the other day, I don't, I don't like the taste of coffee. I really don't. I like the, it's, it's my legal cocaine, you know, but I don't, I don't like the taste of it. Um, but it gets things done and don't want to live without it, but, um, wait, there's painting better than to, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, there's some people that just, yeah, there's, there's some folks out there that are amazing. Now, a lot of it is, not a lot of it, some of it's photography. I feel like all the pictures I've taken of these Irish guys, I, they, they don't look very good. The lighting in here is not, I need to take them outside. So it's some of that, but... Um, yeah, there's some folks out there that are just stupendous. Stupendous. I had one guy, he made a comment. I forgot on which board it was, but he, he made a comment. He said something like, man, your stuff looks really good. I didn't think that any historical miniatures painters painted their figures worth a crap compared to 40K players. And I said to him, I said, I didn't know any 40K players painted their figures at all. <laughs> I mean, come on. There's people that are, that are good painters that, that do different periods. And, you know, there's fantasy painters that are amazing. And there's people that are historical that are amazing. There's people that do both. 
Um, I don't do any fantasy, so, you know, um, yeah, I'm not the both, but, um, yeah. Yeah, there's always going to be somebody better than you. There's always going to be somebody better than you. That's okay. You need to do what makes you happy. If not, if being the best painter makes you happy, well, you're going to be disappointed because you're going to, you better stop looking at other people's work because there's going to be people that out there that are better than you. Um, that's okay. Um, maybe they don't play well or they don't play very often or, you know. I've, I've played with other people's figures, some figures that were just horrendous looking. And there are armies that I love. I kicked so much ass with them, you know. So I, I think, though, that the worse an army looks, the better they do. It seems to be the thing. So. <laughs> and modelers, people that do models. Oh. It's outrageous. It's outrageous. There's people. There's some people that do like um, one seventy second scale tanks, and the tanks look better than the real tank. I mean, you put a real tank next to it, it would look like shit. I mean, they're they're that talented. I'm not one of them. I'm not one of those weather people. Weathering person. I did models way back in the day. I don't. I don't want to do them any, anymore. Um, Tea at home and coffee out. Cold tea? I'm up for cold tea. That's true. I have to say, I can't recall seeing a historical game where at least a good portion of figures were unpainted. 40K special local games are quite often gray plastic. Yeah, and they're soupy and they're, and they're super expensive. They're super expensive. And when I grew up, people that... Um, You either made rules or you made miniatures. You didn't do both. And I think when you do both, they're trying to get more action out of the market, but they also creates the whole, we're not selling enough of these figures, so we need to change the rules kind of stuff. And, or, you know, discontinue stuff or, you know, I don't know. I'm, there's, there's game, there's two games that I would have gotten. I never really played any games workshop stuff, okay? But there's three games that, have piqued my interest from them. And all three of them were discontinued before their time and have a very high demand for them. So it's like, okay, it's, I just, doesn't make sense why they can still make Monopoly after, I think it came out in the, in the Great Depression, didn't it? They still make Monopoly, but they couldn't get Man of War to last more than two years. Or Dark Future. Dark Future and Man of War. What was the third one? Oh, Hero Quest. But now you can play Hero Quest on your phone. So um, I got my Hero Quest fix from that. But um, yeah, you go through all the trouble of developing a game. You've made miniatures for them. They're in a master. You can continue cranking more out. Why stop making them? Uh, you know, I don't know, to create fake demand for it, but then you don't re-release it. They figure, okay, we stopped making it for a while, like, you know, Disney does with their movies in the vault, but they eventually release them again. It's not like, well, we're not going to put Sleeping Beauty out ever again. Well, that's stupid. You know, you are in the business. To, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but, you know, aren't isn't a business to in, be in business <laughs> and give consumers a product that they want? So... I don't know. I don't do well with that type of business model. I mean, I paint slow. So imagine me. Let's say I got into doing Man of War, okay? Which looked like a really fun game. It looked really cool figures. That's the fantasy um, uh, naval game that they that they had for, you know, um, a couple of years. I want to say it's only like two years or something like that. So I get I finally paint my one of the fleets. So I get one fleet done and start working on my second fleet. And they just continue the game. I've just invested hundreds of hours in a game that is dead. They killed it for me. I want reimbursal for my freaking hours that I spent paying. <laughs> that's just not a that's not a business model that works for me. You know, 
Um, if all of a sudden Phil Barker said, we're not going to make any more copies of DBA 3.0, what would I do? Well, we may not play DBA 3.0, but we'll play something like it. Maybe if it means we have to create our own home rules, but we're going to, we're invested enough in it. We're going to keep going with this. So, um, you know, so, uh, Australian Greg says today I ordered ancient British army from forged in battle. So the other night I kicked two of those, uh, ancient British armies to the curb. Just so you know. Okay, uh, continue. Uh, got some extras, including elephants for the Pyrrhic army and a stretch goal of 10 Dark Age personality figures. Yeah, you'll have to take some pictures of those dirt personality figures up close because they look great online, but I'm sure in person they look awesome. Uh, that's the stuff I dig, you know, the individual figures for, for that stuff. So I'm half tempted at some point to do, to do a big uh, Anglo-Saxon morph. Do something I can morph into um, Godwinson's army and also um, Alfred the Greats, just so it could span all that, that period. Because there's the, the core is about the same, and I don't think they would look any different. I mean, if if you wouldn't be able to tell the difference, and um, you know, and Mitch already has Normans and. That way all the people in the UK can call me the good guy because they hate the Normans. So nah, that's not why. The figures look beautiful is what, what they look like. You know, so. Um, okay. Let's go one level higher on this. Yeah, that mithril silver is a really good shape. But I actually have a couple colors I've never even opened. What? That's correct. I got a couple of uh, I got a couple of these that aren't even opened. And I don't know how in the hell I got them. Look at this. Shadow gray, never opened. I'm sure it's plenty alive in there. This paint's awesome. This is like the best paint because it's the same as the coat the arms paint, which I think is the best paint. Of all the paints I have, these and these apply the best. Uh, what else do I, I know? I think I have another one that's not opened. Where, where is it? I could be mistaken. Looks like I, I was mistaken. I got two of these. I got another shadow gray. I don't know why I have it, but I do. I got Ultramarines Blue. How's she doing? Look, she's still got the tab on her. Shit, this thing is, that's in good shape. I'll do an unboxing video. Tony shows his, his uh, Mark I Citadel paints. Yeah, I got that. I got a yellow color. I got like a bone something or another. I got this beautiful green. This is a beautiful. This is a, this Dark Angels green. I used I used to use this when my World War II figures. I used to use this as the uh, backdrop color for all the uh, German insignia. This is the one I would use. So like the little bars that they have on their on their neck. I don't even remember what the hell those things are called anymore. But I used to use this for it. It pops up really nicely. It's a, very rich, rich, dark green. I forget about it though. I, I forget that I had those colors over there. I never think about pulling them out. Uh, what else do I got? I got an orange, fiery orange. Look at that, it's mostly full. Um, this yellow, is it sunburst? This yellow isn't worth a damn. Neither is any yellow. But it's a pretty color yellow. Uh, what do I got? Vermin fur. I think this was one of the colors I was using as a, as the rifle butt color way back in the day. Yeah. It might be some life in it, but. What else we got? The 
is purple. Lich purple. Here's the other shadow gray. Bubonic brown. Ooh, I wonder where they got this color from. This is a metallic. Are these worth anything? Amethyst purple. It's a metallic purple. That's mostly full. I must have gotten that from somebody. I don't want these paints anymore. Here, you take them. Okay. And then I didn't use them either. What else we got? Nice sidetrack. I like it. Okay, that's that ultramarine's blue that we pulled out. Got another blue color here. It's like cobalt colored. Nauseating blue. Uh, I wouldn't call this blue nauseating. I'm sorry. It just, that's misnamed. There's nothing gross about that. There's that shadow gray. Here's that dark angel's green. Um, I got three more. We're almost done, folks. I need you excited to see what other colors I have. Zippity dude, I'm kidding. I've got uh, bleached bone. I've got goblin green. I've actually used this one quite a bit. Not for a single damn goblin, but. Yeah, this one's 75, 80% full. And scorpion green. Okay. Note to self I got to remember I have these paints here to use. They'll probably keep another 40 years if I don't open them. I'm pretty sure they'll last indefinitely. Well, they may not last 200 years, but, you know. Now we're just being ridiculous. Anyhow. We did that little bit of uh, highlighting there. That was the Games Workshop sidetrack there. 